the closer we get to Bitcoin's having, the more we are hearing about it on crypto social media. So what exactly is it? How does it work? And is it going to make all of us crypto millionaires? If you're curious to learn more about this topic, then all you have to do is just keep on watching. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and I'm with Bitcoin for Beginners, here to bring you interesting and informative content with no frills nor fluff. So before we get into Bitcoin's having, if you could do me a huge favor by smashing that like button and subscribing down below if you haven't already, I would appreciate you immensely. Alright, so now let's get started. Okay, so what exactly is Bitcoin's having? Well, this actually relates to the block reward, not the supply itself. So Bitcoin's having has to do with its monetary policy and how it goes from having zero Bitcoins in the world to roughly 21 million in the whole world. And it has to do with its emission rate. And what this means is that each mined block issues new Bitcoin, which is the block reward for the miner to help secure the network and maintain the ledger. And so this new Bitcoin adds to the current circulating supply and it constantly does so. The block reward started out at 50 Bitcoin per block every 10 minutes, of course, because that's a rough block time. And in 2012, there's the first halving and that went to 25 Bitcoins per block. 2016 was the second halving and that went to 12.5 Bitcoins per block and that's the current rate. And then in 2020, which is next year, it's gonna be the third halving at 6.25 Bitcoins per block and that's roughly May 20th, 2020. This is just a approximation because the halving is programmed for each 210,000 blocks. And as you may know, if you understand how blockchains work, especially Bitcoins, they don't happen at exactly 10 minute intervals. It may vary depending on how fast or how slow miners find the solution to the math puzzle. So here's just a table that we made that has to do with the years of each halving and the block number at the halving point, the rewards and how they change, how they go down in half over time. So you can pause the video and just take a quick look right here at this table. On the right side, we also have the four year increase and also percentage of max supply that we've reached by that point in time. So why does halving exist anyways? Well, this was hard coded into Bitcoin's algorithms by Satoshi Nakamoto. And this defines the monetary policy of Bitcoin to give it a predictable, scarcity inducing and deflationary supply. This also kind of mimics the mining of a precious mineral like gold. The 21 million max supply is not hard coded into Bitcoin's algorithm. There's nothing that says like when total number of Bitcoins reach 21 million, then stop emission. That's not coded in the algorithm. Rather, it's calculated by math, because if we have the block reward every four years, then mathematically by 2140, which is still quite a bit of time from now, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins created. And it kind of tapers off if you plot that out. So what will happen in 2020 next year? 87.5% of the total supply will already be mined at this point and the inflation of the supply will be less than 1.8% per year and decreasing from then onwards. Currently, it's at roughly 4% per year. This means that miners will receive less Bitcoin and there will be less continuous selling pressure of newly mined Bitcoin because miners have to fund their operations, right? So they need to sell their Bitcoin in order to pay the upkeep and electricity bills and so forth. Theoretically, the price will be suppressed less too and maybe the price will go up because of this. So we mentioned this a bit earlier, but let's take a look at the effect on Bitcoin mining as well. Around 2140, all Bitcoin in existence will be mined, and long before that, the emission of the block rewards will almost be insignificant. So how will miners stay incentivized to continue mining? Because right now they want the block rewards, they want those Bitcoins that you earned if you successfully mined a block. And in theory, Bitcoin will be used on a super large scale by then, and transaction fees will be the incentive because Bitcoin will be worth a lot by then and transaction fees might be decently high. And so that's how they would be able to justify paying the price to keep on mining. So what all of you guys may have wondered and me included is how might this affect the price of Bitcoin? Let's take a look at past halvings to get a decent idea about this. For the past two halvings, the price bottomed respectively 378 and 539 days before each previous halving and the price reached top respectively 12 and 17 months after each previous halving. And each bull slash bear cycle lasted longer. Currently we're at less than 410 days until the next halving. So a big question a lot of analysts are wondering is, is the bottom already in? The general consensus among experts and analysts in the Bitcoin community is that the bottom of the bear market should happen long before the halving if history is indeed an indicator. 
And that means it's expected for the price increase to happen sooner this time because of front running. That means people trying to get in ahead of the price rally. Here's a graph that we got from Insider Pro that shows the Bitcoin's price history with a reward having days marked. And those are the vertical lines. And if you look closely, you'll see two thin dotted lines that go upward. This is on a log scale, not the linear scale that we see on CoinMarketCap. And if you look closely, you can see Bitcoin's price kind of stay neatly within those two lines for the most part. And this graph is not the most updated because it stops in mid-2018. So as we know, in 2019, it's lower by now but it still stayed pretty much within those two lines. And the bottom line has served as decent support since years ago. And so does Bitcoin's price have to follow this? No, it does not have to. But if history is any good indicator, then it's a good chance that it does, at least in my opinion. So what about future halvings after this next one? Because it's going to be much lower inflation, like we talked about earlier, this means that there's likely going to be less effect on future halvings on the supply. Because of this, this upcoming potential bull rally may be the last one that we see due to having at least. Also, when there's a higher market cap of Bitcoin, that makes it much harder to move the price in either direction percentage-wise. So while Bitcoin's huge rallies may be a thing of the past, this could mean that the bear market that we're in right now might end soon too, at least before 2020, once again in this theory around having is accurate. So thank you everybody for watching. Are you excited about the halving? I'm excited about Bitcoin's halving. I'm holding my Bitcoin. Hodl forever, at least a part of your Bitcoin stack. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, be sure to smash that like, subscribe if you haven't already. This is Kevin. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you guys next time.